Any message for Gannon? The message for Gannon I have is, Gannon, when you get here, you'll be able to truly tell what happened. And then I really hope I get a sincere apology from everyone who has made all those things, especially from my husband. We just wanted to add a message to Gannon from my family, is that we love you and miss you, and we hope that you come home soon. And Gannon, I can't wait till you can come home and let everyone know that you're okay. We love you. That was weird, right? Um, you seen that video, that interview with her, and was just like, just that interview of just herself talking about Gannon and how he's missing was just like, what the heck? And ever since then, I've followed this case, and I've just been obsessed with it. Yeah, I just got super attached to this case. Anyways, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and get right into it. My intention in this story is to just get right to it tell you the raw details about it so i'm gonna start off by talking about everybody that's involved not everybody but at least the main people that are involved after that i'll tell you the initial story that t had came out with and then I'll talk about her arrest and then we'll talk about the theory and the affidavit so gannon stouk was an 11 year old boy he was born in Laura, South Carolina to his father, Albert Stelk, and his mother, Landon Hoyt, on September 9, 2008. He was a Libra. Their strengths are cooperative, diplomatic, gracious, fair-minded, and social. Their weaknesses are indecisive, avoids conflict, will carry grudge, and self-pity. From what I could gather, this is how most people described Gannon anyways. Landon Hoyt is Gannon's biological mother who still resides in South Carolina. Albert Stouk, or L, is Gannon's dad. He serves in the Army National Guard. It has been said that he sparked up another relationship while he was married to Landon. This woman's name is Leticia. Leticia, or T, later becomes Gannon's stepmother. T has a daughter named Harley. Harley is 17 years old. Gannon also has another sister that's biologically related to him. Her name is Lena. She is eight years old. It all started on January 27th. T reported to the El Paso County Sheriff's Department that her stepson Gannon had gone missing at 6.55 p.m. Al was in Oklahoma on a military assignment. He left two days prior on January 25th, which made T the only person in charge of Gannon. She claimed that Gannon had a tummy ache, so she called him into school. She told Al, I'll just make an excuse so that I can stay home with Gannon. Her excuse was that her stepdad had gotten in a car accident and had died as a result, which was a fact, but that happened years before. Later on that day, around 4.15 to 5 p.m., T was in the basement working out when Gannon came down and asked if he could go to a neighbor's slash friend's house. T allowed him to and claims he was supposed to be home around 6 p.m. She told authorities that she doesn't know which friend's house he had went to, but she went around neighbors to see if he was around. Police did a brief search at her house and took a statement. He was classified as a runaway due to the fact that he left his phone at home, and one of the most recent searches was, can my parents track my phone if it's turned off? On February 4th, his case was upgraded to endangered for a few reasons his age, his resilience on medication, and the weather. Her story later contradicts itself when a neighbor named Roderick Drayton had came out with home security footage showing that her and Gannon had arrived at a later time. He asked Leticia if she wanted to see the footage, but she refused. Roderick told ABC News that he greeted both Gannon and Lena morning of the 27th, and he said that something just fell off. Once he discovered that Gannon was missing, he decided to go through his home security footage and seen that Leticia and Gannon had took off at 10.16 a.m., later returning at 2.15 p.m. When he shows the footage to Al, he claims that Al has said, I knew she was lying about the time. So when first looking at this video, when Roderick first came out with it, it really does look like that Gannon didn't come home or didn't get off the truck with Leticia. Later on, the affidavit 
does make it seem like Gannon for sure got off that truck. But in this video, it doesn't look like he did. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play it just so that you guys could see for yourself.
On January 29th, T voluntarily did an interview with police. She was two hours late and she showed up in her freshly washed car. She had brought some notes to her interview and I kept referring to them and then later on during the interview she asked if she could just read off of them. She came to tell police a different story than she initially had told them. So I'm going to backtrack a little. T had reported Gannon missing on January 27th. She claims that a couple days before his disappearance on the 25th, Gannon was helping her in the garage and that he cut his foot on something enough that his foot started to bleed. The next day they went on a hike to Garden of the Gods and sometime after the hike, Gannon had knocked over a candle had ruined the carpet. T claims that she accidentally recorded a video and this is a video. Well, devastating. Initially, Scott, I can't lie when the TMZ information... Gannon, I promise this is the last time I'm going to ask you. I'm just freaked out, okay? Are you sure you didn't do it on purpose? He did it. Okay, he you promise. He promise. On purpose. Pinky promise. Pinky. Okay, all right. So, listen. Listen. We're, all right, I'm, we're going to have to sell stuff to fix it, Okay. So okay. we figure out what we gotta sell. We can sell the sofa. We can sell whatever, cause we gotta get it fixed. So, the lady, don't be mad at us and kick us out of the house. Okay? <coughs> you got it. So going back to that interview, T said that after Gannon had ruined the carpet, that she went to go look for somebody who was able to repair it. She claims that she had drove around the neighborhood and had seen some guys working outside and apparently she had approached one of the men and that man's name was Eduardo. She approached Eduardo and she had asked him if he knew how to fix carpet. He had said, yeah, she was like, cool. She had gave him the code to the garage, was like, oh, can you go ahead and repair it while we're not there? That was on the 26th. On the 27th, T claims that she had got home, Eduardo was waiting for her in the basement. She claims that he had attacked her. After that, Lena had came home at around 3.15. T claims that Eduardo had allowed her to go upstairs and greet her daughter. Yeah, apparently after she had greeted Lena, she had told her to go play outside. So Lena went to go play outside and he went back downstairs to the basement where she had got attacked again. After or during her attack, she said that Gannon had seen what was happening and that he jumped on Eduardo's back and Eduardo had pushed Gannon off and slammed him on the wall and then demanded T to give her a suitcase and a particle board. She claims after this that she cleaned up and called authorities. Yeah. Obviously, they started questioning her story. They confronted her about some things such as her phone activity was active during the time of her alleged attack. Later, looking on at the text messages, she was texting Al and she was texting Harley, um, texting him about some earbuds for Al. They confronted her about the home security had detected that the back door had been open um, 10 times during her alleged attack. And another thing they confronted her about was Roderick's home security footage because in the footage they had reviewed it and at no point did they see Eduardo entering her home at that time. After confronting her with all this, they took away her phone and T starts to panic and starts shoving Kleenex down her pants. After this, she tells authorities that her chest is hurting and that she needed a medical attention. So they give her the medical attention. At this point, they did seize her car um, and they're also working on a warrant, I think like a search warrant for her house or either a warrant to arrest her. I'm not too sure what kind of warrant it was. So they take her to the hospital. After they take her to the hospital, she just magically is better. And then she uses the hospital's phone to call somebody. They don't know who, it's an unknown person at this time or they're keeping that disclosed as of right now. She calls up a person to pick her up from the hospital and she gets dropped off at a local gas station. From the gas station, she gets picked up from her daughter, Harley. 
she goes home without anybody knowing. One time after, Al kicks her out. And then two days later, she does this interview. I am Tisha Stout, which is Gannon's stepmother. Uh, you've been a part of the investigation since the very first time. You were the last person to see him. Is that right? Correct. Uh, what, what did you see when you last saw him? Well, I'm not allowed to talk about anything with the case. I would more so be willing to talk about how the community needs to have faith and continue to work together and not make these false accusations like the things that have been said that I've disappeared from the community. I haven't been there to help, but there's lots of reasons behind that. Uh, reasons like death threats, right? Right. Death threats are one of them. My family is getting lots of death threats. We counted over 20 some death threats already. Um, two, my husband's ex-wife is living in our home and of course I'm not coming home to do these things and to help with the family when I was kind of like told I couldn't. Um, and then many other things that happened with the El Paso County Police Department, you know, and in doing the investigation I was told I wasn't complying. And uh, could I elaborate on that? Please do. Yes. So I asked for an attorney during the interview uh, and I was denied that by them. I was held because they were blocking the door and I was told I couldn't leave and that if I would have touched them, they would have probably, you know, said I still wasn't complying or said I was, you know, trying to run away or something. But during the interview, I asked several times, could I stop the interview? Could I get an attorney? Could I stop the interview? Could I get an attorney? I was denied. I was told I couldn't get nothing to drink. I couldn't go to the bathroom. I mean, it was continuously that my constitutional rights were violated. And that's why you say that they said then you weren't cooperating with the investigation. That's why they said I wasn't cooperating at that time, correct. And why did you ask for an attorney at the time? Well, I asked for an attorney at the time because there was one individual, there was two really good detectives, mm -hmm. and so I'm not you know, going to talk bad about detectives, but the tactics they started to get when I would answer questions, they try to, you know, they're detectives, they're supposed to twist, the one main goal is to find Gannon. But during that time, some of those things made me feel uncomfortable the way they were saying things. So I immediately stopped and felt like, felt like an attorney would help me with some of the vocabulary and things like that that I needed help with and understanding some of the things that they were asking. I'm going to shift gears to what has become a huge online presence of people right. obviously trying to do the right thing, mm -hmm. help find Gannon. But at the same time, sometimes it just feels like rumor mongering. Have you seen any of those comments yourself? We have. And see, that's one of the main things we haven't uh, been around in the public eye because we did, I didn't want to expose my family to it if all these things were going on. You know, there was comments about Gannon getting pushed off the hike and there was comments about this and that's just not true. I took care of Gannon for the last two years in our home because his mother didn't want to do it. And I would never, never, ever hurt this child. And I know there's some questions out there about, okay, so tell me what happens. That's up to the investigations when they end up letting you guys know, but I've cooperated with them, even to the point that we were held with a gun and my daughter, a 17 year old who serves our country in the United States Air Force, who has never committed a crime or done anything wrong in her life, was put in handcuffs over the keys that was in her purse so they could take her car. And they weren't in there? They weren't even in her car, I mean in her purse. And they were you, in my pocket. You originally didn't even know it was the uh, law enforcement officer? I didn't know it was a law enforcement officer because when he came out, I guess he was putting his jacket on and it, it wasn't necessarily his fault. He was adjusting and happened to catch me. But I saw the gun and I panicked originally and kind of thought, oh gosh, I got the, like, who is this guy? And then once I realized it was the sheriff's office, I was totally okay, but they still had a gun and told me they were going to shoot me. But I was really concerned about my daughter asking why she was being detained in handcuffs and things like that when... That shouldn't even happen for a child. That shouldn't happen for someone who was standing inside of a store shopping because we couldn't have any clothes because all of our clothes were here. If we came here and got clothes, you know, we would be harassed. So she went to purchase some underwear and things like that and was put in the handcuffs in the store, you know, and then brought out with men with guns. And there's that, that's just not OK. You know, they could have approached me and said, hi, I'm with El Paso County. Can I please get this instead of the way that it happened? I'm just going to take your shot. You're doing great. Well, I forgot we're Still got a recording, still can hear you okay. Okay, yeah, sounds like we're good. Every once in a while my mic will get out and I want to make sure that's not going to happen here. Okay. I, I should try and clarify here. Not necessarily crime rates, but the way that people are reacting online to rumors about you with the search. Oh, oh yes, wow. The rumors have gotten so bad. Uh, I pretty much have been told at least 10 different ways that these people have these conspiracy theories. I guess they watch a lot of law shows and maybe they have all these theories on how um, Gannon is dead. 
And that's what they're saying. So I'm like, why are you saying Ganon is dead? He is not dead. We are going to find Ganon. And that's the main goal that we all have, my family has. Just because you haven't seen us, we have that same goal. We've been out searching. My aunt has been out searching. My family has been out searching. We all have been doing that together so that we could protect each other. How does it feel when not only you have a lost child who you are in care of, but then people blaming you for that child not being there? You know, I, I'm just ready for Ganon to come home. Most importantly for him to see his family, but second, I am going to be so ecstatic when I'm able to say to people that I hope they have a really sincere apology for all these theories that have came out online, for all the things they said that I have done or people have done. And I just want everyone to know that we're going to find Ganon, and I love him so much. I've helped taking care of him for so long. Can you talk to me a little bit about him? I don't know him. Ganon is so kind and he loves to play video games. That's one of his favorite things. He loves Sonic and Mario and you know, he's always helpful and I, he was always so helpful with the dogs around the house and we have two little cute dogs and he was always like a person I could say, Ganon, can you go do this? And he would do it right away. You know, sometimes with kids we have to remind them and things like that and that's okay, but he was so sweet and able to help anyone. He could notice when you're sick and say, are you okay? And such a kind heart. Um, I know you just said that you can't say anything about the investigation, so you can just say so again if you can't answer this, but is there anything we can hear about the hike? Was there a hike? We don't, that just seems like rumors right now. You know what? Um, could we bring, uh, my daughter up here? Cause she can, she can go and say that, you know, she came home from work after the hike and she can verify that Gannon was at our home. Okay. Yeah. That's fine with me. And if she doesn't want to, that's okay, but you're allowed that's to fine. ask her. Is that okay so far? Yes. I need Harley. I need Harley. Because they want you to verify was Gannon at home after the hike. Because you didn't go to the hike, but you came home from work. Hmm? Do you want me to just say yes? No, just answer the question. Yes, you, you came home from work and you, ver you can verify Gannon was at home. Yeah. I told her she didn't have to be too in-depth because she is still... You know a child but i want to make sure that someone knows that there's another person to verify that gannon sure does she need to hold this no yes so i came home later that evening i was at work and i can verify that he was there that night so there there was a hike that you guys went on but then you guys came home yes where'd you guys go hiking garden of the gods oh yes okay um i guess when and then we ate burger king afterwards so you know <laughs> there you go yeah um and then it just was, I'm going to go to play at a friend's house. And then it was just, uh, I'm off to go to play at a friend's house. Unfortunately, I'm not able to like comment on that anymore. And for that reason, it's because some things have been turned and twisted. And, you know, that was one of those stories you were talking about where people say things. Um, we had to hear things like, who would let their child go out at dark and, and things like that. And, that. and that's just why I don't want to answer that. Um, if I had to give... I'm not gonna say that part. That's okay. Never mind. That's right. I could take that out. I understand that it, it gets tricky with yeah. legal stuff. Do you feel like I asked you what I need to? Do you feel like this is gonna help kind of turn the tide of what feels like a witch hunt, in my opinion? I hope. Is am I on camera? Now? You are okay. still okay. Um, I think that a lot of people can see that I'm not missing and see that I am being cooperative and but to me it's okay that they think those things because my the way someone thinks about me I don't have a problem with that my main thing is I would never want someone to think that I would hurt Gannon or any of the children in our home because that's just not the case I've spent my whole entire life working so hard in education um, there was even things online that was talking about my education license and I shouldn't even be a teacher and they just didn't know that like we moved on a military move and I didn't finish out my contract so I gave up my license in that state yeah. um, it had nothing to do with any criminal activity you know or any of those things and it just got blown out of proportion on my professional status you know and do you feel like these are just internet detectives who think they know what they're doing it definitely is and you know here's the thing that kind of saddens me it's like if you're going to talk about someone like that and have a witch hunt out for them why would you even care like about doing those things because this is a child you're telling me that you're just as mean you're just as hateful to talk about someone else like that that's how i feel like we just should not we should all come together and wait until the end and, and see what happens because again it's going to come home 
Any message for Gannon? The message for Gannon I have is, Gannon, when you get here, you'll be able to truly tell what happened. And then I really hope I get a sincere apology from everyone who has made all those things, especially from my husband. We just wanted to add a message to Gannon from my family, is that we love you and miss you. And we hope that you come home soon. And Gannon, I can't wait till you can come home and let everyone know that you're okay. We love you. T gets arrested on March 2nd in Mortar Beach, California, and was charged with first degree murder of child under 12 by a person in position of trust, child abuse resulting in death, tampering with the deceased human body, and tampering with physical evidence. On March 20th, they find Gannon's body in Pace, Florida under a bridge by a road construction site more than a thousand miles away. I believe the body was actually found by some construction workers who were working on that site and it was inside a suitcase. Um, which goes back to where T was making up that story that Eduardo had asked for a suitcase. Al was deployed on January 25th. What I've recently seen is that Al may have been having an affair at this time. In my opinion, I don't think T knew about the affair, but I think she had a suspicion. The reason why I say this is because some of the stuff that the affidavit has said on her Google searches. She had things like, find real mil military singles. Parenting should be for people, not one. I think she meant like four, two people or something. I'm not, I'm overdoing all the work for my stepkids and their mom doesn't help. Mom advice for stepmom. If you aren't involved in your kid's life, you are shitty. My husband's ex-wife does nothing for her lids. I think she meant kids. I wonder if my husband's ex-wife is sending me a Valentine's card since I raise her kids. One day, some people will wish they treated you differently. Why should my husband choose me over family? Find me a guy who wants to take care of his kids. Find me a guy who wants me to take care of his kids and get paid. Anyways, Al stood the night in Denver and left to Oklahoma on the morning of January 26. It was believed that he was with the other woman. I believe T may have had suspicions. I think she could have taken it out on Gannon. Maybe. The night Al left to Denver is when Gannon allegedly cut his foot in the garage. That was a Saturday night. The next day, Sunday, they went on a hike to Garden of the Gods. Sometime that day, Gannon spills a candle, and I believe T <clears throat> whooped Gannon's butt so bad to the point that he was bleeding. T takes a picture of Gannon in bed for some reason, I think to start baking up her lies in some twisted way. There was evidence of blood splatter, um, on the mattress, carpet, concrete, power sockets. She also makes a video by accident. Some people say that they can hear him say, I'm bleeding. I think Gannon may have told her that he needed to see a doctor at some point, or T felt like he needed to see a doctor. Either way, she makes him an appointment the next day uh, that they never had showed up to. That night, T stays up doing some searches on her phone. I think she's just up super paranoid. She's up at 12.09 uh, midnight looking up. My sunburned carpet. How do I fix it? 12.42. Will humidifier work if exposed to smoke? 12.55. Colorado law for kids staying at home. 12.57. School is out. Is it okay for my kid to stay home? Those searches I don't really understand because she has a 17-year-old. Does she not know when it's okay to leave a child at home or to call in? Like, I, I don't know why she was making those searches and it, it just, it, she's obviously plotting something. The next day, she kept Gannon home from school. She tells Al she's going to make an excuse for work so that she could stay home with Gannon. We all know her weird excuse. In the neighbor surveillance camera, video where Gannon is seen going into the truck, I still think that Gannon thought he was going to a doctor's appointment. 
T has Gannon's phone at this point. She leaves her phone at home and texts Harley off of Gannon's phone, saying something like, T left her phone at home. Let me know if you need her. T goes into Costco, buys a couple of things. Al texts Gannon at 12.06 and says, Hey, buddy. Someone texts him back from Gannon's phone at 121 an hour later and says, Can I pl- uh, please at least play Zelda? Apparently, Gannon was grounded at this time, um, so that sounded like something he would say. Al replies, Not today, buddy. A search is done at 1.43 p.m. on Gannon's phone, and it says, Can my parents track my phone if my phone's turned off? After that, Gannon's phone gets turned off, and T's and Gannon's whereabouts were unknown until T shows up to another PetSmart and buys something. They get home at 2.15 p.m. Sometime during this time, I think she kills Gannon. Lena arrives home at 3.15 p.m. from school. T tells her that Gannon is sick and she should let him rest and to go play outside. At 4.52 p.m., Harley comes home and takes Lena to the dollar store with her. T sends Harley a text at 5.14 p.m. saying, Carpet powder, two things, baking soda, trash bags. So I think when um, Harley had went home, she just like told her, uh, take Lena to the store and I'm going to text you a list. And that's what she texted her. She cleans up the mess, drags Gannon's body through the house from the basement to the garage into the trunk of her car, then called authorities at 6.53. Authorities did a brief search, then left. The next day, January 28th, T runs a Kia Rio. She picks up Al from the airport at 8.50 a.m. She tells Al she rented the car because she didn't want to put miles on her car. Her car was actually parked at the airport where she picked up Al. It was believed that Gannon's body was in the car at that time. Al thought T's car was parked at a local school or something like that. She picks up her car from the airport the same day, dumps Gannon's body on Highway 105, drops her car off at a random place. Harley picks her up. T picks up her car the next morning. Deeps cleans her car and shows up to her interview two hours late. Then we all know what happens after that. So I guess really piecing this together, what had happened was I think T knew Al was having an affair or she was having some sort of misconnection with him. Now, I'm not saying that that's an excuse for what she did, but I think that's what was going on because later finding out Al was having an affair while he was with T and he also had an affair when he was with Landon but anyways that's aside the point but I think I think she was feeling some sort of misconnection with Al and when he left it all started with on the 25th where Gannett had cut his foot in the garage I think she might have even taken away his phone from that day like something happened he was saying he misses his mom maybe he was saying that he misses his dad and that's why she was looking up like find me find me a dude who's gonna appreciate me or like let me take care of his kids stupid stuff husband's ex gonna send me a valentine's day card for taking care of her kids anyways she was having other issues going on aside from ganon and then Maybe Gannon on top of that was adding on to it. Maybe he was saying things that like triggered her or something like that. Anyways, I think after that, on the 26th, when she says that Gannon had dropped the candle, I think that something happened that day and I think that she hit him so hard that he bled on the carpet where she dropped the candle. Or maybe he did drop the candle and then she beat him really hard and just like just whooped him because it sounds like in the video that he is in a lot of pain or he he, yeah he just looks he just sounds like he just got a really bad ass whooping but I think that's what had happened that night and I think that things got too far I think 
she promised him that she was gonna take him to the doctor after like during the video she was like I'm sorry I freaked out or whatever blah 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 maybe ending the video she was like I'm gonna take you to a doctor we're gonna get you checked out I'm so sorry blah 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 maybe she told him all those things and maybe she kept his phone and maybe that's why he wasn't able to tell Al anything and maybe Al was too busy with the girl that he was seeing because come to find out she also is in the army so maybe he was distracted and didn't realize that Gannon wasn't texting him and Gannon wasn't able to text him because he didn't have his phone and after promising him that she was going to take him to the doctor she had looked up laws about keeping a kid at home because I, I think she knew later on she was going to report Gannon missing and people were going to start asking questions. I think she was already looking at things to back up her story. When they first left, when she was going to Petco, I think she told Gannon that they were going to go to the doctor and they ended up not going to the doctors, but I don't know what kind of conversations they were having when they were driving around for two hours. She turned his phone off because they weren't able to track them on the satellite during that time. After Gannon had sent a text message to his dad saying, can I just play Zelda? Actually, there wasn't any activity after um, there was a search being done on Gannon's phone saying, can my parents track me if my phone is turned off? I don't know what kind of conversations or what they were doing or maybe Gannon was passed out in the back. I don't know. Other people had have had a theory that she had killed him somewhere else and then brought him home. And then that's why pe people can't see when Gannon is getting off the truck. But I don't think that happened because they found a lot of blood on his mattress um, all the way through the concrete. Um, and the carpet was replaced. They found blood splatter on the walls and they found um, even blood inside the power socket. So I don't think she killed him somewhere else. I think she came back home and then killed him within the hour before his sister Lena got home. And then I think she was trying to clean up the mess and she still needed more cleaning supplies. So I think that's why she had sent Lena outside to go play until Harley got home. I don't know how much of it Harley knows about this, but I think I have a strong feeling that she knows a lot more than what people are saying because how do you just go and do things without asking? Like, it is just weird. She's old enough to understand. She's not a little kid. She's 17 years old. Like, how much of it does she really know? She sends her to get this cleaning supplies after she sends her to get the cleaning supplies. She's still cleaning at home. And I think that's when she tells the girls, oh, I think Gannon's missing. And I think during that time, she had sent Harley and maybe Lena. I'm not too sure about Lena, but I know she sends Harley to a local um, park to go look for Gannon. And after she does that, she finally drags the body out into the car calls the police and when police are doing the brief search that they did the body was inside T's car. police didn't know it and after they did the search T went to go pick up out from the airport the next day in a car that she rented and she left her car at the airport the very same airport that she picked up L Gannon's body was inside that car anyway she picks up Al in the rented car takes him home goes back and gets her car to get Gannon's body, drops him off on that highway just for the time being, and then she leaves her car somewhere else. She goes back home, gets her car the next day, and then washes it, goes to the interview. Sometime in between, she gets Gannon's body again and uh, takes it to Florida. Yeah, I think that's what happened. It's just a crazy story and it makes me angry because till this day, she still denies doing anything. She always says that she's innocent, but when she got arrested, charged for like hitting a cop or something like that, went into jail 
and she started writing letters to a different inmate thinking that she was going to make like friends with her and whatever. She tells this inmate she's planning to escape and she wants her help and that she already measured her body to the window and her plan is to break out her window with a broom and then escape through the window. Yeah, she's getting charged with that now because she got caught. The inmate, I guess, knew or heard about her charges and wanted nothing to do with T. So just recently she had wrote a letter to the judge saying that she's being mistreated and how educated she was. And anyways, you need to look up the letter because she just sounds really stupid. She just sounds dumb. I think her trial is set to begin soon. Yeah, this was uh, my first video, so let me know what you think. Uh, I just wanted to talk about it because I just think it was crazy. Yep. Yep.